Hello plant friends, my name is Jimmy. I'm a doctor and tropical plant hobbyist in LA and this channel is about plants. So this series is on SoCal Tropics. They are a husband and wife duo in San Diego, California. They have 17 years experience growing, collecting, selling plants. 17 years! That's before the plant craze, before the Aroid craze, before the social media craze. They've seen it and done it all. It was a privilege and a pleasure going to their place and sharing their knowledge and passion and plants with you guys. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. Yes, it's Monstera Deliciosa and it's the um, Aria Variegata. Yeah. It's a large leaf variety and it's, it's still a baby. But oh, it is, is not, um, they've changed the names. The, yeah, yeah this one, they, they call it. it the large leaf, but like everybody's calling it the Borsigiana, the smaller leaf yeah. one. But now they're calling it just small leaf. And small leaf and large leaf. Yeah. So they're yeah. just two sizes. I, I like this guy. That's mm -hmm. a little one. We have two. We have one outside. We'll, we'll take a, a we'll take a look at them. This one's really, I, I like it. This is like probably my favorite variegation pattern, the, <clears throat> the yellow, and it's, it's so, it. it's so good. Do you feel like it's any different from the other the other variegated monsteras in terms of care? No, everybody's yeah, the same. They sort of the same, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly the same. They're and such then, an easy plant to take care of. The less you fuss over them, the better. Just kind of just let them do their thing. Water them once a month at least. <laughs> we do. They do their thing. Even this one got sh uh, damaged in shipping. Yeah. And I just said, oh, you know, let's just keep the leaf in it. Formed a new leaf off of it. Oh yeah, yeah. So see, everybody. You guys are very. Things can things can still grow even though they get damaged in shipping. You just don't give up. <laughs> oh yeah, I like the I like how each leaf is mm -hmm. is so different. I love the. That's the what really, I love really, about Chimera. Yeah, I really love the the dark ones. It's mm -hmm. it's so so impressive. Let me see what you have down here. This one is the. Oh, the white. Sport. The staff of Island. Mm -hmm. It's a peace lily. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. It's a white sport. Wow, I don't yeah. think I've ever even seen this plant. No, there's a couple I have. Um, I have a friend that goes through all the um, growers that, ha that do just the basic green forms. Yeah. And he'll find um, odd wow. odd sports. And then he gives me a jingle and says, hey, you there, want it? Because like, I think Because yes. <laughs> I think there are two common varieties of the variegated peace lily. I think there's like... The Picasso. Mm, I have one of and those. And then there's like, um, what's the other one? The Domino or something like yes, that? Yes. Yeah. And there's a Jessica too. Oh, there's a Jessica. Yeah, there's, yeah. Which is a very good one. And there's another one from Thailand. Um, I've seen the Jessica's revert though. Uh, oh my yes, god. Yes, Jessica's revert. This one is stunning. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, is it going to stay small like this? Or no, I assume it it's going to get bigger, get right? The, yeah, it'll get bigger. Oh man, this one's really... And you find this one is like... This one can't survive. Peace lilies can't survive on once a month watering, can they? Uh, they require a little bit more water. Yeah, right. They're still pretty tough, but uh, I'll I'll typically water them maybe a couple times per month. A couple times a month. But mm -hmm. still, yeah, they, uh, they can do uh, with a quite a bit less than most people probably think. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, I think peace lilies are known to be very water hungry. At least that's their reputation. But. Uh, mm -hmm. For somehow, I don't know. You guys are trained your plants really well, or something. I don't. Um, oh, okay, let me do. Let's do the one in this the corner. Sure. This is a philodendron oh, purple yeah. wing. Wow. Now, when it gets exposed to um, bright indirect light, preferably natural light, it'll get more of the white leaves. Um, oh, yeah. We just got these two, yeah. so we haven't. We're trying to experiment with the the white LED to see yeah. if that will happen on the new growth. And these were already formed when they got here. Yeah. Um, so this this leaf I'm holding is the one that seems like you always see in the pictures. This mm -hmm. like, this type of like, you know, mild speckling. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, this this thing is huge. Do these revert or change or anything like that? No. Besides from what you're okay. Yeah, the whippleways uh, stay true. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested to see if I have to move it towards. Um, switch a plant out and move it towards natural light, yeah. sunlight, to see if it'll get the white leaves. I was yeah. told from a, a really good friend that, yes, it probably needs to be moved. <laughs> so I hear this one is definitely really, really hard to find. Very right? hard to yeah. find. It has. There's just only a few collectors in the U.S., and they're not available, f at least from somebody that I know in Thailand. They just 
they're very, very difficult to, to acquire. There's very, very, very few. Limited. I think this is like, what, two plants? Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is, this is absolutely, this is stunning. This is a very popular plant these days. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very sought after right now. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive. Goodness. And from what I'm seeing is it's, a, it's the average growth rate of a normal uh, philodendron. Okay. I'm not seeing it go any slower. When I got it, the leaves were folded and they're coming out and it's already producing, you know, again. So it's, if Oof. there's any mis, misinformation, it's a slow grower. It's actually, to me. You know, I think there's enough chlorophyll. And especially, well, I guess you also have a good size one, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Um, there's definitely enough chlorophyll. I think um, the dispersed. sun brings the, again the, the variegation layers um uh-huh. it'll lighten the variegation in in the plant and and then it, this green would be probably white if it got more real sun if i would have had the plant oh i the see get-go. yeah as yeah. i grow it i'm hoping the led will keep make the new growth go white mm-hmm. but again i might have to move it towards a natural sunlight to get that. so this plant i guess is far enough from your window where like it needs this this little lamp LED, right? The daylight LED. That's the only sun it's getting almost. Yeah. Primarily, this is like the sun. I've learned that you have to, if they're off, especially far away and on a grow light, they've got to be on 12 to 16 hours a day yeah. because, of the you know, it's not the real sun. Yeah. So as far as their needs, they need to be on. So you so you, you compensate intensity for duration or mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. something like that. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. I guess let's do the oh, obliqua. Mm-hmm. Um People, people like this plant. Mm-hmm. It's actually one of my favorite plants. How long have you had this guy? I want to say, again, probably a year and a half. Yeah. And it did have a long runner, which we propagated, and we're trying to grow some. I think there's some conflicting information out there. Some people think that like when a plant develops a runner, it's stressed out. I don't know exactly know the origin of that. What do you guys feel? Because I mean, you have a lot of Monsteras, and a lot of Monsteras do give out runners at yeah. some, some point. I, I would say that... If they're gonna, the reason they're doing that is they want to propagate themselves. They want to make a, more plants, so they're gonna go out and search out a new area to develop roots and, and form a new plant. So I think, it, especially with the, this plant, it's going to uh, send out those runners just to form new plants. I think yes. that's the nature of that species. Kind of like a spider plant would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just how, how they multiply. Obliqua also has a reputation of being difficult to grow and also requiring very high humidity. You know, I'm like, I'm like, uh, now, now I don't even know. Now, like after talking, after talking to you guys, I'm like, do plants even need water? I mean, that's. I know. Um, it, one thing I have to say about it compared to the Andesanae is that it is slower growing. Yeah. So you have yeah. to expect that it's not going to grow as quickly as one if you're if you're already having an and you're trying to compare i'm noticing that that is a d- different a slower uh, grower yeah this is oh this is and the runner was quite long it was about a foot and a half yeah. so i had to <laughs> cut it because it wanted to go into the next pot <laughs> i was like nope <laughs> oblique was probably what if you're talking about price per ounce or, or, or you know how, however or yeah the other right? sometimes are worth more than gold right yeah, yeah. like um i would say this because it, it was especially hard to find yeah scarcity was it hard for, for you guys to to find one no i had a, a really good friend that actually it came to us came to us so yeah <laughs> yeah i i feel like yeah i feel like nowadays um obliqua and I guess even, you know, even the variegated Addisonia, it's um, sort of like, you know, if you have a little bit of money and well, maybe a lot of money and you have like some connections, um, mm-hmm. you can you can get, get one. Mm-hmm. I think the one thing that I feel like is still super hard to find is the Spiritus Sancti. I feel like even for people mm-hmm. who are very well connected. Wait for Thailand to do their uh, <laughs> tissue culture. Their tissue? Okay. It's coming out in tissue culture next Similar year. Similar to the Oblica. And, oh, and uh-huh. the Oblica. Okay. Uh, but I have to say something about tissue culture. Sometimes when they TC a plant, it's not going to be as hardy. Sometimes it can be hardier. You just don't know what they're going to do in the future. Mm-hmm. They're going to mass produce them. They're going to get them yeah. out there. Yeah. But what was it? Raphiovidora tetrasperma came out in tissue culture. Yep. I have the actual species. Yep. And then I have the tissue culture. Yeah. I'm noticing that the tissue culture is paper thin. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't grow as well. Yeah. I'm not impressed at all nice so when the sancti comes out or the oblique i'm curious to see it may 
it's I just have this feeling it's not going to be as hardy. So people are going to eventually be saying this is a oblique tissue culture. This is oblique speak, you know, real species. Yeah. Pre tissue culture. Pre tissue culture in their listings, and it's going to vary vary the price as well. I believe in the future on on anything that's tissue culture. Yeah. I think they're going to have to disclose that because if I sold the tetrasperma, for example, as a normal one and somebody got it that knows the plant they're going to say it's well, a tissue culture yeah so yeah. what's wrong with this plant that's the way i would do it yeah. if I was the body yeah yeah I so i think it's good that people you know should disclose that yeah so i know that the term tissue culture is being thrown um, and used a lot more in the plant world and the plant community for those who are just really unfamiliar with what that actually means um Tissue culture is essentially cloning. It, you sort of take uh, some cells or some tissue layers of a plant, you put it in a container, usually a test tube of some sort, and you put in growing media that will stimulate growth and proliferation of the tissue sample, right? And ideally what you will get is from that tissue sample, you will get lots of identical plants Right, plants that are identical to the original tissue sample. The good thing about that is that you, you know, if you take a plant that's, you know, maybe extremely rare, or very hard to grow in cultivation or in the wild, or an extremely, you know, slow grower, and you are able to successfully tissue culture that, then you get, you know, tons of, you know, this the same the clone of the the mother plant, so that. That's awesome, right? That improves availability, it improves affordability. However, there are some limiting factors, okay? So sometimes during the, the, you know, the proliferation or division or growing process, um, there are mutations that happen, okay? So that means that instead of like ideal clones of the mother plant, you have mutations that may kill the clone, right? The mutation may be incompatible with life or, or living or growing or whatever, and it may just like kill the clone. It can also, if it, the, the clone is able to survive, um, a lot of cases that mutation will make it an inferior plant, right? So the plant may be, it may look a little different, it may grow a little different, it may be weaker, more sensitive to stuff. So it may change the, the, the properties of the plant compared to the mother plant, okay? Yes, there are some cases of mutations where it makes it a stronger plant, right? Um, but that's that's usually not the the, the, the norm, okay? The, the norm is that most mutations will cause an inferior or more sensitive um, product, okay? So I think that's, the mutations are definitely a, a big, big limiting factor. Um, I think another limiting factor or something that should be at least considered is that if you take, if your original mother plant is in itself an inferior specimen, like, you know, maybe that, you know, for some reason that specimen is, is more sensitive or, you know, harder to grow or um, maybe its leaves are, you know, originally weird or, yeah, or maybe it's a, a slower grower. Um, so for whatever you, you know, we call inferior, right, or more sensitive uh, mother specimen, if that's what we take as our original plant, then all the clones will essentially have those traits. The potential for, for tissue culture to, to really improve accessibility and availability and affordability of rare plants is, is just tremendous. Um, in the U.S., I think a, a very well-known example of tissue culture is the uh, Rhapsidiophora or the Raphidophila tetrasperma. Um, I think that's, <laughs> that has, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely made that plant more accessible and more available. I, I think that probably there was some, something that went awry uh, along the way so that a lot of the specimens that were tissue cultured that entered the U.S. market, the leaves were a little bit off. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I think the, the variegated Monstera Thai constellation, I think that's also a well-known uh, tissue cultured plant these days. Uh, and I think on the Europe side, uh, I know that the philodendron uh, Hastatum, Hastatum, yeah, Hastatum or Silver Sword is being tissue cultured. The philodendron Pink Princess is being tissue cultured over there. Um, and there may be some other, other plants that I'm just not aware of yet. I see a lot of rare plants and like there's like some rare plants that you guys have and it's like wow I've never even seen this. this we is, try to um, imagine plants and then find them. <laughs> yeah, this is this is so this is the white princess, okay? It is a white princess. Can you explain what's the difference between the white princess and white um, wizard, right? The white, white wizard, wizard or the white It knight? is they're completely different plants. So uh, the the white wizard I believe has more round leaves and then ah. it won't have the pink in Oh, and this okay. and it'll just be solid green. Yeah. But this one's even a step above a normal white princess. It's called a white princess on pink stem. And why they call that is if you look at the main stem, it's not white and green on variegation. It's a pink and green. And as the plant grows, it has Whoa. a it has a higher chance of throwing some pink in the leaf as well. And that's different from a normal white pink princess. a white princess. It's different. Jeez. Yes. Holy moly. Well, oh, well I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really pretty because it, it, this plant, again, is a climber. So, yeah. it, you know, once she grows, it'd be nice to ha have the white and the green and just a, a little bit of pink in there, you know, just yeah. here and there. Yeah. That'd be just yeah. so pretty. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this is, oof, oh, the variegation on this leaf. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I have a few white knights in there, or the white wizards, and they, they lost their magic, let's just say oh. that. <laughs> they just reverted, so I'm just like, I just have a, a bad impression of how, how they retain their, their variegation over time. It's yeah, just been, chimeras, we just can't predict. Yeah, I've just been, I've just been a, bit, a bit unlucky with them. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely, absolutely stunning. The white princess is a lot harder to find than the, the white knight or the wizard or the pink princess. Right? Yes. And then this one, adding the name on pink stem, yeah. I've contacted several Thailand and uh, Japanese, and they're just like, this is, it's a even more rare, rare to find them. Those are Tradescantia, and those are also very highly desired uh, Tradescantia from the collectors <sighs> out there. This yeah, they are. A, they are very pretty. I'm trying yes. to see if I can capture the, mm -hmm. the thing. One's the pink dragon, and then one's the uh, Blasfeldiana cerinthoids. Uh, they're both fuzzy, meaning they have a fuzzy texture. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the leaf texture is very, it's very fun to touch. Oh, yeah, this one's definitely fuzzy. And they're more prominently found in the United Kingdom. Oh, okay. Of these varieties and oh, wow. very scarce in the u.s and i'm hoping that they'll grow quickly because i have people already going oh, i want to buy a cutting <laughs> so you would just i guess you would do these you can just like take a cutting and then just oh, yes. root it okay yes, yes. oh yes yeah this one is yeah, this again don't require much water oh yeah this is yeah it's it's like it's like filling fuzz mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, yeah. mean, I don't know how else to describe it it's, fuzz. yeah it's mm -hmm. fuzz it's yeah. like um yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm one of those people who just like keep touching plants and trying to decipher their characteristics mm -hmm. just by like feel. Oh yeah. yeah, the underside, the underside is very, very, yeah. very fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do let's do this one. Oh, what's this big guy? That's a Diffenbachia. Now, as far as the type of Diffenbachia, I'm not sure. They're calling it bull's bull's tongue. Bulls tongue. Bulls tongue. Oh, yeah. and these are these are easy to grow, right? Like, yes. Soda, right? Yes. Again, doesn't require a lot of water. And it gets quite a bit of sun there. I get a lot of yeah. morning sun. Yeah. And it does great. Jeez. Yeah, this is... Grows pretty quickly. This is well. very impressive. As in, like, I'm not even into this type of plant, and yet it's a... Uh, yeah, for people who love variegation, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of hard not to like this guy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have one I saw, and I, I, I had to have that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh. It does take up uh, quite a... Quite a bit of space. It does. Is the yes. yeah? It's is gonna the, get probably too big for that. Yeah, area. like it does take quite a bit of space. And okay, let me see what's underneath it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, syngoniums. Ooh. Scrambled eggs, syngonium. Scrambled eggs, syngonium. Form of the wind. The winderai, the windanderai. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If it got more um, direct sun, it would get more of the yellow. 
Okay. Um, that would look like an egg yolk. Yeah, this syngonium is a very popular one. I think uh, it is. I think a lot of uh, Winder, Landerai, or whatever has like a more narrow. Um, yes, it does. This white is a streak. Of, yeah. Yeah, and it's obviously the common ones are not are not well, very I good. No, that was one of the first ones in the United States too, right there. They're for the scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've never even I've never even heard of this plant really. Mm -hmm. Like, I like syngoniums a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they're very underrated. And I think it's like they're just so easy. They're just so easy to I know grow. They are. All right, guys, that's uh, going to wrap up this video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And again, like, subscribe, comment, and also check out SoCal Tropics. Uh, until next time, happy planting.